What's up? I'm Cotton. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. Welcome to Cotton Talks. If you are new to my channel, I'm glad you decided to click on my video. This is my new channel. I just started it and it's whatever I want to talk about. And right now, I'm talking about the new Twin Peaks. So if you are new to my channel, why don't you go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you can be made aware of future videos. And if you are already one of my subscribers, I'm so happy you decided to watch this video. You guys, the first episode, parts one and two. This is a totally different show. Different aesthetic. The show looks completely different. It The tone is completely different. A lot has happened in the 25 years. A lot of things have changed. The Agent Cooper that we know and love is still trapped in the Black Lodge. Apparently Dr. Jacoby, now he's not obsessed with Hawaii at all. He's like totally like Grizzly Adams mode, living off the land and orders like a ton of shovels. What for? I don't know. If you guys have any theories, I would love you to share them. I would love for this video to open a dialogue about the show, about what you think is going on, and I'll tell you what I think is going on. Ben Horn has gone through quite the change. He used to be this very misogynistic jerk. Now he's respectful of women. I never saw that coming. <laughs> This man owned a brothel. Respect for women was not high on his priority list. And he would also sleep with every girl that started that started working in the brothel. I mean, he slept with Laura Palmer, who's his like best friend's daughter. That's so sick. I guess after those events happened, maybe he had a change. Well, he did have a change because he went completely mental and went civil war on everybody. And he, yeah, yeah, that's a whole other thing. But yes, I was very surprised to find him to be very respectful and nice toward the character that Ashley Judd is now playing. And by the way, she how beautiful is she? She's stunning. And then we see his brother Jerry, who used to be kind of like his partner in crime. Not anymore, but he's doing very well. Jerry's always been kind of a cartoonish character to me, and he just seems like a cartoonish hobo. We get to see that the dynamic between the two brothers is very different from what it once was. They are not as close anymore. Well, apparently there's two Sheriff Trumans now. The Bobbleganger. That's why I decided to call Cooper's doppelganger that Bob is also possessed is the Bobbleganger. <laughs> so if I say the Bobbleganger, you'll know what I'm, that's what I mean. The evil one who has this long hair and he, his outfits, not good. That's not a good look for uh, Kyle McLaughlin. So the Bobbleganger goes into what I can only assume is to be a Beulah's brothel which this is a recurring thing throughout the Twin Peaks world is prostitution is everywhere. And Bob is drawn to prostitutes. There was the whole thing with the Flesh magazine that the ads were in where the other girls were killed, uh, except for Maddie, the who cousin was the only one that was not a prostitute that he killed that we know of in this universe. I don't know about you guys, but I know that scene, I got it like a really, big like deliverance vibe. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the film Deliverance, you know, with the dueling banjos. <laughs> Buckhorn, South Dakota, which is where Bobbleganger has been hanging out. Maintenance man is Hank Fillmore. He is very paranoid when the cops come. Like he's like, he thinks he's in trouble. It's very clear. Hank, Hank is probably been up to no good. And he's carrying a trash bag and a medical case like like kind of like the old-fashioned medical cases when doctors like did house calls what is he doing with that part one and part two what it really accomplished was letting us know this is a different show it's completely different we're in a different frame of mind psychologically for all of the characters they're all in a different place Nothing is at all the same. The style of the show is different. The pacing is different. The color scheme is different. Except for a few times, just a few shots of the of the Great Northern Hotel. That that is the Great Northern and does very much aesthetically look very similar. But the tone of the colors and the clothing is much more 
toned down and not as vibrant. Color in general is not as vibrant as it is in the other series. This one is much darker, which I think is a great indication of telling us that this one is going to be a very dark series. What's in that medical bag? Who is that but who is the John Doe? And where's the rest of Ruth's body? I mean, these are things, you know, that you're asking yourself during this whole time. And who is the mysterious billionaire? I really think the billionaire is some character we have to, we probably know. Because who else would build a, something like that? That's got to be a character that we know. I don't think that would be a new one that's introduced. Just for the fact that it is a portal to the... Black Lodge. That is my theory of what it is because that's what it seems to be and also because it was stirred up from sexual energy and as we know from the past Bob was attracted to sexual energy and that sexual energy brings on an attack and kills a couple in which I think that was the arms doppelganger that actually did that. I would love to know if you guys agree with me or if you disagree with me what your thoughts are on that as well. What your thoughts are on the Bobbleganger. I don't know if you guys like that name or not. You can let me know. If you hate me saying Bobbleganger, I will stop. <laughs> and I will come up, well, I'll just say Coop, Coop Bob Doppelganger or the Doppelganger Bob, whichever. There's a reason that, that Bobbleganger has been hanging out in Buckhorn, South Dakota. What is that reason? I wanna know. What's in South Dakota? I don't know much about South Dakota. That's pretty far away from Washington State where Twin Peaks is. There's three locations that the series is taking place in, and that is New York, Buckhorn, South Dakota, and Twin Peaks, Washington. What is the connection of these cities? What is the through line to New York? We know that Coop, that we know how Bobbleganger is connected to Twin Peaks, but how is he connected to Beulah's brothel in this area? Because he seems to have a well established relationship with Beulah and her brothel and Ray and Daria. That's these are people he seems like he has done business with quite a bit. Who knows for how long? And who knows what, like, what is it that they're all doing? They're doing crime, I know that. I'm so curious, the, you know, the Principal Bill and Phyllis, well Phyllis is out of the picture now, and George is going to be framed for that murder of Phyllis, so they're going to be sharing a cell possibly, I don't know. That's a lot of murder for what looks like a very small town, which is very similar to Twin Peaks, and if you remember in Twin Peaks, Jacques Reno's brother, he made his mission, decided to kill Cooper, and he had said to him, since you got here, a girl died. My brother was killed. Like, like all these people died. Like, people kept, got, people were getting killed and bad things happened ever since you got here. Same thing is happening possibly in Buckhorn. That's my theory of what they're saying. It's happening again. It is happening again. It may have just evolved into a different type of like signature, like they talk about with serial killers, how they evolve. He's become more of a sophisticated killer with, I mean, that severing of the head was pretty clean cut, you know? I don't mean to get too gory or anything, but it was a very clean cut. It wasn't, it wasn't messy or anything. And it was obviously done after she was dead because there was not blood everywhere. That was another thing. There was a very, there was not much blood in that, that, seen at all. There was like hardly any. So we know that's not where the murder took place. In Twin Peaks, the, where the murder take place is never the same location that the body is found. That's what we have had happen in the past. That's probably how it is now as well. And that's what, that's all pretty obvious that the murder did, of that the murder of Ruth did not happen in her apartment. She, her head was placed there along with the body of John Doe, who we don't know where his head is, and we don't know who he is, and we don't know where her body is. That's a very strange thing to keep. Like, what are they doing with that? Did they need that for something? Is this a ritual? Or is this just part of the evolution of the killings? 
I tend to think it's more of the evolution of the savagery and killing and becoming a bit more sophisticated and not as rageful. Bob's murder by himself were very much full of rage and like and sexuality. These killings aren't that way at all. They're very different from the, well, the ones that we saw were. Even though Daria is in very, is not in, is in like her bra panties and lounging, that's not going on. You know what I mean? She does say how like she misses him or whatnot, whatever, but it's not like how we've experienced the murders happening in the Twin Peaks universe. He shot her and I mean he did hit her once Bob style. I mean that was a, that one punch that was full that was totally Bob. I knew it was Bob. You could just tell it was the same kind of movement. And I gotta really commend Kyle McLaughlin on that, on that on that on his physicality that he has taken on is very so it's so different. The way he walks is completely different. It's 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 impressive. And also, hey, these these actors look fantastic for it being 25 years later. Um, they, they really do. I'm very excited about it. I'm also like, it did seem a lot less action, but that's kind of like a trend. That, I mean, that's kind of more how like storytelling on serial television and these shows now is like. At the time that Twin Peaks was airing, a whole lot would happen in the episode because that was more about that era of television was more about telling a story in one episode. Kind of like CSI shows. You know how CSI it's like it's a standalone thing? Well some of Twin Peaks were kind of standalone-ish and I know that was a that was a struggle between Lynch and the network was for him not to make it so episodic and to have more standalone episodes and that was an issue that he had with his network at the time because that's not what he wanted to do. He wants to tell the long story and that's what he has the opportunity to do this time. Him and Mark Frost, him and Frost, Frank Frost, sorry, don't want to forget, leave him out either because this is a collaboration. Once again, we are going to be seeing the ugly side of suburbia and all of its glory. I'm excited. I was hoping that there would be more revealed in the show. Uh, this just has a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions that came out of viewing it. I'm going to watch it several times more before the next episode airs. See if I miss stuff because it's a type of show where you do need to watch things again. I think they did a great job of establishing that this is a different show. What we are going to see is going to be something totally different than what we saw before. I'm not saying it's going to be any less good or anything like that. It's just very different. One thing that I found kind of interesting, even though all of this horrible stuff happened, like the ending at the roadhouse with the band, which did anybody else think that that band kind of reminded you of of when the Velvet Underground had Nico? Well, they didn't have it. Andy Warhol made them put Nico as the lead singer. I'm a huge Lou Reed fan, okay? You feel me? Not for the Velvets. I, I like Nico on her own. I don't care for Nico with the Velvets because of my love for Lou Reed. You know, it was a bit of nostalgia. This is a different type of music too, which also sets a different tone, but there was this quality of nostalgia and it was rather warm. It was a completely different tone than the rest of the scenes in the entire two parts. It felt more lighthearted. People were happy. They were laughing. They were drinking. They were having fun. That's the only scene where we see people having a good time and enjoying themselves. So it's interesting that that's how it ended. And it ended in a way is completely different from everything that we saw. Visually, it looked more like the Twin Peaks we know and love. It was still evident it's not the same show. It's changed because it's been 25 years. I think that's a good way to start a series like this is to have a lot of questions and to make your viewers think. I don't like it when things are just spoon fed to me. I like to have things to think about when I watch something. I'm, that's, 
that interests me more. I like it when they think when the directors and the writers give the audience credit that they have intelligence to figure things out. That's one thing I love about Lynch that he does do that. Sometimes you figure it out, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're just like, I have no idea what's going on. And then like maybe, I don't know, a month or two later, you're like, I totally figured it out just now while I was just like eating my nachos. <laughs> I'm serious, like I've had moments like that where I'm just like, that's what it was about. I got it now. <laughs> the choices for all of it were very, it's very provocative. And by provocative, I mean, intellectually provocative, much more visceral, I thought, than before. I don't know, I that maybe that was just me. I also did just recently see the movie Raw. I don't know if you guys know this. I will talk about this in a later video. And maybe I was just really into like things being very visceral. Okay, this is what I do know. That somebody is going to go into that prison and find Ray and get that information. You know, 430, Richard and Linda, two birds, one stone. We still gotta figure out what that is. I mean, the giant always offers clues that help Cooper. How is this gonna help Cooper? Hawk did end up going into the forest at the entrance of the Black Lodge that we found out in like the final episode of the last series. Margaret Log Lady called him and she said, you know, tell me what happens. And so we're left also with that cliffhanger. I'm definitely would love to hear what you guys think about the show so far, where you think it's headed. How do you feel about this new show? What do you think about the new tone? How do you feel? I wanna know. Just leave it in the comments. Well, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you would go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can be made aware of future videos. I'm not going to just have videos about Twin Peaks. I have other ones planned coming up that I think should be pretty fun. And they have nothing to do with Twin Peaks. But they have to do with a beef with, with Spider-Man. My beef with Spider-Man will be revealed. I am Cotton. I am definitely done talking. I have been talking forever, it feels like. <laughs> I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.